Lake Apopka is part of the headwaters of the Oklawaha River. Uh, the water in Lake Apopka flows north through the AB Canal into the Harris Chain of Lakes and flows, uh, continues to flow north up into the Oklawaha River, which eventually joins with the St. Johns River. And all of this water flows uh, north out into the Atlantic Ocean near Jacksonville. The Oklawaha River emerges from the Green Swamp in Lake Apopka, slowly flowing into the Harris Chain of Lakes. This section of the Oklawaha sits upstream of several structures, including the Moss Bluff Lock and Dam, and provides less than 14% of the Oklawaha River's water. Approximately 66% of the Oklawaha's water comes from Silver Springs, a group of 25 springs. A free-flowing Oklawaha River is critical to restoring this famous spring system and state park. Silver Springs State Park, famous for its glass-bottomed boats, attracts hikers, kayakers, stand-up paddlers, and sightseers. Although it still reflects beauty and the real Florida, it could be brought back to its glory days. Silver River is different than just about any place in the world. I've been to about 35 countries and I filmed all over. I come back home and find out my backyard is about as exotic as it gets. One, we have animals here from um, you know, the Pleistocene swimming up and down the river. We also have a, a unique collection of springs in one place. There are very few places where you have 13, 14, 15 springs and several of the first magnitude. That means over a million gallons an hour coming out, just a huge quantity of water coming out of these springs. Well, I've been on this river since I was a little kid, and it has definitely changed. For people who've just come here and ride a kayak, they think everything's perfect. But there's a lot wrong here. A lot of species that should not be here, and a quite, quite a few that should be here. We're missing striped bass, we're missing a number of other species, and a lot of other birds that used to come here. So a lot of things are gone now, and partly because of the Rodman Dam. So it's time just to complete the whole system, to make it all work as one big piece. Next, the Silver River intersects the darker waters of the Oklawaha. The Oklawaha River moves north as part of the Oklawaha River Aquatic Preserve, the natural section of this magnificent river. Plants and trees are diverse, wildlife is plentiful, and due to the swifter, cooler river, aquatic weeds stay in check. There is no other river in America quite like the original Oklawaha. Along the way, you encounter many of the historic steamboat landings. Colby, Connor, Gores, and many more. Eureka, the second largest of the paddle boat stops for Colonel Hubbard Hart, was the birthplace of Captain Erica Ritter. As a young child, Ritter saw the crusher crawler machine destroy part of the large cypress forest near her river home. Growing up as a child on the river, I didn't have a boat, so I grew up on the banks. And uh, our, we loved to take walks to the river. We always did that every day, got our chores done and took a walk. So the Cross Florida Barge Canal was a very large impact to our family. And we walked down to see what the latest destruction was. Uh, my mom cried on a stump that they cut down of a huge cypress tree without a boat growing up as uh, teenagers. And uh, even before we were you know, like 10, 12 years old, uh, we would go to the boat ramps uh, at Eureka, the old ones that were still operating right on the river, and help people put their boats in, try to see if we could get a ride further up the river with our inner tubes to be dropped out to be floating down. Um, their also favorite thing was just to be there when the fishermen came back and see what they caught and ask what they caught. Um, so most people were out fishing for uh, the panfish, the sunfish family, and bluegills and shell crackers and red breasts, uh, some speckled perch fishing, which I was not aware of when growing up. Um, when one fish I became aware of at a very young age that I didn't know existed in the river was the Atlantic striped bass. Across the river at Eureka East, you will find the remnant pilings of the Cross Florida Barge Canal, as well as the Eureka Spillway and Dam, which was never operated. 
Jay Bailey, a Marion County native, reflects on the history and culture of the area. Early in the 19th century, the Silver and Okawaha Rivers provided a magical steamboat route between Putnam and Marion County. Tourists began and ended their stays in beautiful hotels in both Ocala and Palatka. Other steamboats ventured even further up the Okawaha and now what's known as the Harris Chain of Lakes. Writers such as Modrican and Rollins, Sidney Lanier, and poet Samuel Taylor Coolridge wrote vividly about these waterways. In fact, Lanier described the river as one of the sweetest water lanes in the world. Artists still capture the beauty through photographs, music, poetry, and so much more. Eureka is the start of the impounded river, the point where visitors can visibly begin to see the significant impacts from the dam. The tree diversity diminishes, the banks disappear behind the high waters, wildlife sightings are fewer, flow slows, and tours are often blocked by a river clogged with massive invasive aquatic plant islands. Twenty springs have been drowned from the waters behind the dam. I have been a bass fisherman my entire life. I'm not just a bass fisherman, a competitive tournament bass fisherman. I have fished on Rodman Reservoir many times. I've won tournaments there. I've got one big fish in tournaments there. Rodman is an amazing bass fishery and arguably one of the top bass fisheries in the entire southeast. I love fishing at Rodman. But then one day, uh, Margaret Tolbert uh, was going to be presenting a film at Okamek uh, called The Lost Springs. And that film showed me these amazing springs which are lost when the water is up in the dam. Many of them, natural beauty. And that film started me wondering about the cost of being able to fish at Rodman. And then Margaret invited my wife and I to spend a day with some other folks on Rodman, actually the day before the drawdown was to come back up. And we went around Rodman following the Okawaha. We went through all those stump fields that I used to fish. They were underwater then. And we went all the way up the Okawaha and we stopped at some of those lost springs. They were beautiful. And I found myself sad that each one of these things, a thing of beauty, would within a week's time be gone for a very long time and not available for people to enjoy. What a shame. That did it for me. I formally supported retaining Rodman. Uh, but then I became not just a supporter, but a strong supporter of restoring the Okawaha. It seems to me that the cost of retaining Rodman is very much too high. It's going to be difficult for fishermen because we all loved Rodman. I was there when it first opened. It was a who's who of fishermen. Some of the greatest fishermen in the United States all flocked there. So I understand the pain of losing this, but the whole river system is not just one place. The Rodman fishery has gone down. It's not what it was when you and I started fishing there years ago. And today it's a whole different fishery. It's time we're gonna have sludge building up. We've got a lot of weeds that are getting sprayed and hosed down and they're laying on the bottom. The long term is not good for Rodman. So I, I feel sorry for the folks who've grown up there, live there, build their houses near it, but you really have to take that into consideration and change what we're doing now somehow. Past historic Payne's Landing, Orange Springs, and Kenwood, you enter the Rodman Pool. The Relic Cross Florida Barge Canal is your only choice to get to the St. Johns River off of this reservoir. You must navigate the stumps and floating logs, remnants of the river destruction 50 years ago, and then make it through the Buckman Lock to the St. John's. 
By breaching the dam, boaters will be able to complete their journey downstream via the lower Akluaha River, a beautiful winding waterway that continues to the confluence of the St. John's near Wallaca and on to the Atlantic Ocean. We have thoroughly come to love where we live. We have a small resort here called Wilaka Lodge and uh, we have guests that come from all over and a lot of our guests will bring their boats with them. They like to explore the river, they like to fish the river, ski the river, but one thing they don't do is go through the barge canal. I have never had one guest come to say, oh, I can't wait to go to the Rodman Pool. They don't want to go up the river that far. They don't want to have to wait for a lock. They don't want to get inside the locks and have to wait for the lock to open up to get them out. They don't want to have to navigate, navigate all the tree stumps and lose the rear end of their expensive boats. And this is the general consensus of all my guests and all the people that I know in this area. There are people that are proponents of keeping the dam because they like the water source, they like the fishing. Well, guess what? We're not lacking for water here, folks. The whole river is here. There's more lakes in this area. There's no need to hold back the water from the Akawaha. What we need to do is be able to get in our boat, go up to Akawaha, which is just right over there by channel marker 52, take a hard right and go all the way to the Silver River. Go to Silver Springs. I've been wanting to do that since I moved here, but it can't be done with the dam. As you travel north past Wallaca, you come to the St. Johns River waterfront featuring the city dock, beautiful clock tower, St. John's River Center, and downtown murals. This area has recently been transformed. From Wallaca to the Atlantic Ocean resides a productive 100-mile estuary, supporting a thriving sports fishery and commercial shellfish industry. Shrimping abounds. Estuary anglers know that a healthy and sustainable fishery depends on the right balance of fresh and salt water. The estuary could suffer the same impacts we've seen to oysters in Apalachicola Bay due to upstream blockages, water withdrawals, and nutrient overload. This productive estuary ends at the Atlantic Ocean near Jacksonville, the beginning of the migratory pathway to Silver Springs. So a free-flowing Akulwaha will create so many new recreational opportunities. Not only will it improve water quality, but it creates new spaces for people to go explore, either by kayak or powerboat, to take photos, to bird watch, more wildlife viewing, manatee watching. And so it provides so many opportunities along the Akulwaha and the free-flowing springs that will be recovered, but also downstream because water quality will be improved with the restoration of more than 15,000 acres of forest and floodplain. With reconnection of the Akluaha, the estuary will be renourished by the addition of 150 million gallons a day of natural flow and the cleansing power of 15,000 acres of restored floodplain forests.